Okay, so good evening. Uh, so, last week uh, we stopped basically here. We uh, set up uh, a. Uh, we, we did two things. The first thing it was uh, we set up this uh, uh, web application that was composed by just uh, some uh, an HTML file, a JavaScript file that uses AJAX to sp to send and process data. Uh, with a PHP script that was very, very simple and just performed some, let's say, keyword matching, string matching. So if it's high or hello, uh, this uh, script uh, responds with hello, and if, it, if the sentence contains weather, it will respond with it will be sunny. And we also tested it uh, with the speech. Um, Hello. Uh, web speech API. So if you write hello and if you write something with the weather inside, it will be sunny. No matter what you, you write, just weather because it's, it's quite stupid as a PHP um, script. And uh, to add some intelligence or smartness to this, we set up a uh, agent on dialog flow just to remind you what we did about for speaking about the weather and we set up some sentences and we tested here in the chat so if we write here hi we see a response that is uh, greetings, how can I assist you? That is one of the default sentence in the uh, greeting intent, in the welcome intent, in the default welcome intent. And if we ask uh, what's the weather in uh, Rome, we got as a response it will be sunny in Rome. Uh, with this type of response, again, quite static and let's say get stupid because it will always respond either it will be sunny in a city the city that you put it or it will rain just the system just put take one of these two options randomly and present to you this so obviously if you want to have an, a vocal or a text-based uh, chat assistant like those we are starting create we need we still need to do two things the first one is to put this in connection with our code our simple application and the second thing is avoid to give a static answer about the weather but provide the right answer about the weather in that city maybe also in that date in that day that we choose to to have here so we need to perform these two steps, uh, one, before, one today and the other one we will do it tomorrow. Um, but before doing this, let me say two things uh, that mainly stem from uh, last lab, some question I, rec I received, so I would like to, to give uh, uh, you all an answer to these two things. So the first thing, it uh, was about, uh, can we share, yeah, it was here, not in the lab, but the same. Uh, it was, we can share this dialogue for project with all team members. One of the, of the team creates the, um, the agent and the other people access them. Obviously the answer is yes. So you can go here in the settings of your agent. There is a share tab here and you can see who has access uh, and its role. So in this case, it's me and it's, it's the creator of this agent and the role that is by default 
admin and you can also add here other invite people by mail by google accounts basically and you can also set up a role for these people and you can choose between reviewer and developer and you have to choose developer if you want that your team member can work on it and use their credential also to call the api and interact in code and not just your credential that you can share in the team but they can also create their one but also to edit because the reviewer is read only also for this platform for for the website and in particular if you go in access control in the documentation you see that developer and the reviewer uh, the developer can edit the, the console that page so edit access the owner that mean has full access to the console the developer has edit access to the console so it can edit something not create new things and the reviewer is just read access to the console the admin and the developer can detect intent uses using api so can submit a text a text what's the weather and receive a response it will it will rain for instance using the api both the admin and the developer while the reviewer cannot and then here you have a lot of uh, so you see the dialog for console role are just these three admin developer and reviewer but here you have quite a lot of other ro roles these roles we will use this role um, today to integrate we choose one of these roles today to integrate the algo flow in our code and so you see here we can choose between four different roles the dialog flow api admin the dialog flow api client the dialog flow console agent editor and the dialog flow api reader and we are going to use either you can choose to access the api from code or the Dialogflow API client role or the Dialogflow API admin role. The admin has full access to the entire Google Cloud Platform console, while the API client just edit access, so a little bit uh, restricted access. Uh, the client is from the API has not access to the dialog flow con console on the web while the other access as a read access so you can read what you set up in the website and both of them can detect intent using api that it's what we need right now so through, through api you can detect the intent so what's the weather the way the intent is a weather, and the response of this is again static right now it will rain it, it's sunny and so on so this is detect intent, but the API can allow, can allow you to, for instance, create a new agent, to add new entities, to list existing intents, to add the new intent. So the admin has full access of this, while the client has basically not just access to this and no access to the console. Uh, and then there is also the API reader that just has read access to everything and no access to uh, detect intent using API. So we are going to, at a certain point, we are going to generate a, a secret key, a client secret in JSON, and we are to provide one of these role, and we will probably select Dialogflow API client that is the most conservative of this role, and it's the minimum access that we need. But if you do it alone, you can also select the Dialogflow API admin as a role. Obviously, this client secret is a JSON file that you will download on your computer and you don't have to share online because it's a, a client secret. So it's something, it's, it contains a private key. So don't share a private key on the web. It's not a good idea. And this is the first thing. Um, the second things, yeah, there are three things in reality. The other things that I was looking last time 
and I didn't found here is that page. That page, we have seen that uh, there are a, a series of entities already present in the algorithm flow that are system entities. This page lists all of them. So you have the sys date time entities, only date, only periods that match a date interval from day one to day three, for instance. Time, number, cardinal, sequence, flight number, and unit, uh, volume, weight, and more and more about this. This is a full, full list of these, a lot of them. Some of them are specific for uh, specific language, these one are about Chinese as a language, other about English. So they have the list of, if you are able to understand what is written, they have the list of uh, some, some example. So for instance, the, the cardinal is 10, this is in English again, the ordinal is 10, the, the number is 12. So these are matches of different um, system entity. So here you can just look at it in Dialogflow or this page in the documentation list all of them including the one deprecated and the one that replaced them. So for instance there is a GLCT US only for cities in the United States that is now deprecated and superseded by zero cities that includes city everywhere not just uh, United States city. And this is, was the, the, not the second, there is still one thing. Um, the other thing that I would like to, it, it's a picture. Uh, so in the lab, I, I received some question that make me wonder whether the very simple architecture of the uh, web application, web sample we, we developed was clear to everybody, so just to, to be sure. So the, the question is, is clear to everybody or I need to explain this? It's clear, so can you explain this? So it's clear, it's, it's a proof. So what, what do we have in our application, in, in our application that we have right now? I can also remove this, it's not a problem. If you prefer to speak. Uh, we have the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript page. That is our, let's call it front-end application. And this is true. And it's not only that. Yeah, um, so we have the front end that when the user, like I will repeat for the video recording, uh, when the user um, writes something or speak uh, with the computer, it translates the text and send the text with a post request in Ajax to a, that file that we call the process.php that process a little bit in this case and send back to the front end the response. And both these entities are served by the same server, different server, right now the same server, but doesn't matter. Other options. So what, what uh, your, your colleague described is just this. We have a front-end application in HTML, JavaScript, and CSS that perform an HTTP post in Ajax to the process.php file that echo back a response that will be hello or whatever it is right now. And that with, that, with that order, more or less. Uh, and that post is obviously in Ajax. Uh, because yeah, that one is a front end and the other one is a PHP page. So wh where the server is? We have a server. Yeah. Yeah. 
Because the we have, yeah, okay. Right now we have just one one server that serve both the process and the front end. I know that uh, in theory this is how to work. I was wondering right now. Sorry, I, I didn't get what 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 server what uh, the Apache server serve. Yeah, no, okay. Let me do it again. Uh, so in a traditional let's say php application you have a php file that generates html code that is seen on a browser this is the traditional web application in php you have a php page that echo some html tags and the browser render that echo or whatever they print or use a framework no matter at the end it it handles the php file handles all the front end and back end so it's the server it's the php file that through the server serve create html pages temporary not on disk right now we have two separate entities in the same project in the same folder but they are two separate entities we have a couple of html javascript we have a html page a javascript page and a css page and we have a php file that is called process.php so this is obviously served by an apache server because otherwise it's just text the question is that one right now is served by the same server or not so I, I i don't agree but um, that is a, yeah it's a standalone but right now it's served by the same server so ju just to be clear I, I take my the application so that's so it was not totally clear it seemed so i i took my application that is here and, and that, this is one this one the same that you have on github so uh, i have a web server running here and uh, where is chrome here on localhost 8888 slash weather app and so i can it doesn't work but i could write process.php here because the php file is that one if i want to call directly that php script it, it don't work right now it doesn't work right now because that process.php file accept only post request and if i press enter here i get i send a get request so it doesn't work so i don't press enter i just wrote that here so that php page it, it's served by the server if the client application is totally independent and not served by any server right now i should be able to double click this file open it and it's indeed it open it and interact with it if it's totally independent so i can write something and i am expecting the right response if it like like you say is it correct that's one that's one of the problem not, not the only one but it's on one of the problem and um, so they need to be served by the same server we are we are saying and so if let's let's try but if i say hi oh, no. there has been an internal server error so the web speech api works also the recognition works uh, obviously no response because this is 
run from my computer and also this won't work if you select as one of the voices one of the Google provided voices because that are not local voices but are remote voice and needs a server so to have this application working right now we need to be I don't write index.html because it's the default but we need to reach that page through the localhost port 8888 slash weather app that is the folder that is published by the server the server server that html pages it's it's quite useless let's say it doesn't do a lot of work it just map that page on a domain and so from here it work like like before if i say hi hello it responds so right now we have all served by the same server both the front end and the process.php file I, I, I ask this because in the lab someone tried to, to launch the, the front end separately from the, from the process.php and they doesn't work together yeah because they are not thought to, to, to work in that way and they were not fought for two reasons uh, the first one is that I try to separate the front end from the back end uh, so that if some of you don't want to use uh, what it is sorry let me close this <laughs> maybe um, they don't want to use process.php but they want to have process.py process.java process.javascript because they want to use node.js as something that provides a server they can and all this continues to work because this is just an HTTP post with some text inside so this is one of the reasons the second one the second reason is that you can have so right now we have just one process one server for everything we, which we can have two, two server two separate server one for the front-end application and the other one for process PHP or we can edit the code both the JavaScript file and the PHP file to have this served by a browser just double click on the index HTML like I did and this the process.php served by a server so right now it doesn't work because we don't have this edit and this modification uh, so w why doesn't it work uh, we can also put the absolute path in the JavaScript so right now because I think it's important to understand this sorry uh, so right now let me open the JavaScript file right now here we have the where it is here we have a relative path we can add, we can also add no problem we can add this we can say that the ajax function m must perform a post request to http localhost 888/process.php we can save this and we can go here no we can redouble click on index.html and type hi oh, no. there has been an internal server error and still an internal server error so i, I served everything on the same server for, for Again, for another reason that was this is a prototype so we can also have a server that is providing multiple function why not we will also have a ter another php file tomorrow that will be served from the same server but has no relation with this process.php they don't speak together totally independent we could have three different server two different server whatever you want on different computer no matter 
but for simplicity we just have everything in one server so it's, it's easier we don't have to perform edits we just can use a relative path we don't have so the, the problem here what is the problem here do you know what's the problem here it's yeah it's coarse yeah do you know what is coarse everybody just him Course stand for, for cross origin resource sharing. If you see the if you see inspect element here, you see that there is an error, two er three errors. Depends on from the browser. In Chrome, just one error. Here it say three errors. Well, the first one is origin null is not allowed by access control allow origin the second error is the xxml http request uh, cannot load http localhost whatever due to access control check that is strongly related to the first one and the third one is fail to load resource because origin null uh, is not allowed by uh, what's called access control allow origin hmm? because a browser by default cannot get resources from a different domain from the default security pro principle uh, structure of a web application web server in general of the web hmm? so the localhost the polito.it can only by default load the content, images, <coughs> text, JavaScript, CSS from polito.it, from the same domain. If you want to get another things from another domain, you have to do it in the traditional way of working via server, via server. Should be the PHP file that asks from another domain, get the resource and render the page or pass it through uh, JavaScript or whatever you want from the same domain. So we can fix this if you want it's just one line but it's again it's in the spirit of a prototype it's just boiler code additional code that is not really needed so just just to just to, to complete this and probably make this possibly clear uh, it's just one line here there are various ways to enable course you can edit the Apache server properties, or you can just add a line here in PHP that is header um, access control, what's called access control uh, allow origin. Nope. Hmm. So just a line to say header. What we put in the header of the request access control allow origin from star asterisk everywhere hmm. this is let's say a hole in security because we are allowing every domain on the internet to access this file to access this hmm. but it it make our um, code working hmm. so if we go here and possibly, uh, uh, let me open this on Chrome. And I say hi. Hello. I get back hello. And if I say something with weather. It will be sunny. But this is just again the HTML file that I double click. So here we have no server for these files. So if you want to, I don't know, uh, run these pages in from Visual Studio Code and run the process PHP from another server or in a different folder in a diff from a different folder you have to perform these small changes that again not uh, strictly needed because it has several implications but most most importantly here is that we have just an interactive prototype so we don't really uh, want to think about cores and so on if we can have everything one server that provide everything it's, it's fine 
it works well for us. Hmm? So, does this? Let me close this parenthesis. I will remove this from the PHP file and from the JavaScript because we don't need it. Hmm? So back to, to the previous version. So let me go back here. So last time, so right now we have, again, process and front end served by the same server, accessible from localhost. Uh, uh, whatever port you are using, uh, slash the name of the folder, and then we access to index.html, and via Ajax, uh, Ajax it gets process.php. Last time we added Dialogflow, that white uh, cloudy cloud. Hmm? And now we have to connect these two, two words. Hmm? And uh, we are going to do this, basically. So the process uh, will be hmm, the user, let me take a pen, red pen. The user asks something, writes something on the front end, the front end perform a post request to our process.php. Our process.php Open a session with Dialogflow API in the agent you already have created and pass the information coming from the front end. Hello, what's the weather in Turin? Whatever it is, pass the information to Dialogflow API in an HTTP post. This is not Ajax, it's just a regular post among two server. Dialogflow will provide, hopefully, a response and uh, the process.php finally will reply to that original post here in Ajax. So this is the process we are going to do today. Tomorrow we will make things a little bit more complex, but tomorrow. So today this is the process. The user say hi, the process PHP send this text to the Dialogflow API, the Dialogflow API respond with greetings, how are you? And the user see them on the index.html. The user say, what's the weather in Turin? Got here in process, process sent to Dialogflow in a post request through the SDK of Dialogflow that we are going to install today. Got a response in JSON and get back the response to the front end. So we are going now to make this process.php a little bit more complex than the one that we have. Tomorrow, as is anticipation, we will have another PHP file that is called what we call webhook.php that has nothing to do with this process. Nothing. That it was, is needed to connect a weather service to Dialogflow act as a bridge between Dialogflow and the weather service to get effectively the weather forecast or to access any other third party API. Could be a calendar, could be weather, could be movies, could be whatever you want. Just an external service that you are not able to provide external information. But this is just uh, an anticipation we will get back tomorrow. So uh, let's go back here. So here we have to perform uh, some operation. The first one is delete this because we don't perform a string comparison anymore. We just uh, ask the algorithm for providing the right answer. And this is the easiest part. Then, uh, yeah. let me refresh just this. Then uh, we need, uh, let's follow the process from the beginning. Let's go into documentation and let's have a look at the client libraries in PHP. So you see here, 
there are quite a lot of client libraries, C Sharp, Go, Java, Node.js, PHP, Python, and Ruby. They are equivalent, with the exception of the Node.js library, that is much more complete than the other one. So for detecting intent, that is something that we are going to do today, they are all equivalent. For the webhook part, that is tomorrow, uh, there is no SDK, basically no component in the SDK for any language except language slash framework slash, slash whatever it is, except Node.js. So we are going to use the PHP SDK today and tomorrow we are going to perform HTTP request by end, basically. Respond in reality, in reality to a PHP request by end by composing the JSON, the needed JSON by end. With Node.js SDK, you can do everything with the SDK. But it's, again, it's trivial also doing this in uh, PHP or in other language, so not, not big difference. But just to have, to have a picture of this. Um, so if we go, for instance, here, no. In the quick start, they show you how to get started, and also they show you some example. In various languages, this is an example for detecting intent in text. That is, happens to be what we really need. We, we are going to do this, more or less. This is the code for detecting intent in PHP. If you want, there is the equivalent in all the other languages up here. So you see that, yeah, maybe in PHP. Um, so you, you, you see what, what happens here. First of all, they create a session. A session, a session represent an interaction loop, a conversation loop from the user to the, the dialog flow. The entire conversation is contained in a session. If you change session, you change conversation, you can change user. But the same user, so ask hi and ask the weather, could be in the same session because it's just one conversation. Then they get the text in this query input and then they send this detect intent with the session object and the query input object that is the content of the text of the request that the user is writing on the website is sent this detect intent to perform the HTTP post request is sent to the algo flow that get a response and can extract it has some methods to extract various portion of that response and this response here is exactly this so that field that we are going to get are the equivalent of this field so you can get for instance the query text if you want to check whether the text they are sent they receive is equivalent to the text you sent uh, you can have the fulfillment text that is the, the object of interest that is the actual response greetings how can I assist you you can get the name of the project the display name any other details here the things that we are interested in is this fulfillment text that contains the response so this greetings how can I assist you so we are going to ex you can extract a lot of these we are just interested in this so how we can move from this json printing on screen to php well we have to do quite a lot of things in reality we first of all need to um where is to install the client library hmm? that is called cloud dialog flow provided by google and we have to use composer to install that in php composer is a management of packaging of packages in php 
and is integrated sort of in PHP Storm, so we can just tell PHP Storm to uh, install Composer and then we can add the dependency and have all the dependency installed. So if you open the project and go to in uh, tools, you see there is a Composer menu. That if this is an empty PHP project, you should see init composer, self update, and show log active. So, first of all, we need to init composer. And init composer asks for uh, two things mainly. The first one is how do you want to have composer? Do you want the composer executable file? Do you want the composer.far file directly in your project? or you have a remote interpreter, so Composer is somewhere, not here, not in this project. Uh, or you have Composer maybe already on your computer, so you can link it. And it asks for uh, the PHP interpreter to be used by Composer, because Composer is made in PHP and download PHP packages, PHP libraries, so everything is in PHP. It needs to know which is the interpreter. So we can select composer.far, so that it downloads a single file in your project so that project is enabled to be used composer obviously if you have multiple projects using the same version of composer probably it's a better idea to have composer in another not replicated in every folder but for our purpose it's okay and then i'm just going to select the, the only interpreter that i set up for php storm that is the MAMP interpreter that you probably have XAMPP interpreter you have to set up if it's not appear here you have to set up here by clicking here and you can set up in just look uh, to the folder which is the PHP executable file is and press OK it's that easy then you have to press OK and you should see in the structure of the project a new file that is called composer.far so it it already installed everything and if you go in tool and you do it again uh, install in its composer you see that appear another file that is also that is opened here that's called composer.json that allow you if you want to set up your project as a composer enabled project so if you want to share this project as a composer packages installable by other projects or downloadable via composer you can set up your vendor name package name the description if it's a stable release if it's a developer release it's an alpha beta release whatever if the license of this is proprietary is a meet license is uh, apache dual license whatever your author name emails and so on we just don't need this we don't want to publish this project on composer uh, but this file contains uh, in addition to the properties of this project all the other dependencies that we are going to install and how we can install that we can just write in this composer.json or we can use again tool composer and you see that we have some other option enabled right now and we can select manage dependency in manage dependencies if you have an internet connection you get all the packages that are available for composer and we are interested in dialogflow in this in google slash cloud dialogflow so we can just select this. We can also choose the version to install. The, la the default one is the last one. I it's okay. So right now is the 0 0.10.0. And we can press install. And if you wait a little bit. and open again the composer.json you see that you have a require line that say require google cloud dialog flow version 0.10.0 .0. and you can even remove all of this and just leave 
the parentheses and the require, the, op the first and the last parentheses, if you want. And in addition, you also have a new folder that is called vendor that contains all the dependency that you installed and the dependency of those dependencies. So for instance, you have a folder that is called Google, that is the vendor, and you have this cloud dialog flow, with, uh, if you open the readme, you just have the source file, the source code, or that plugin, that, you, that, that library that you installed. So for instance, say, okay, this is how you install it, there is an example over here, there is a link to the documentation, you just have access to the actual PHP file of that library. And uh, you can also see, if you want, but we don't, that in source you have uh, um, the source code of the actual request that they are going to, that using the SDK is, is going to, to have. And you see also that this uh, Cloud Dialog Flow brings together other quite a lot of dependencies. There is a Firebase, PHP something, Google has OAT, Commons Protocol, GRP, Protbuf, uh, Gazol, and so on. A lot of dependencies needed by uh, .dat library, that SDK of Google. That is here in this vendor folder. So we need in our PHP code to import that vendor, the right library from that vendor, vendor folder, because otherwise our process.php doesn't know how to look for the client session object that we are going to use to create a session with Dialogflow. And this is the first thing that we need to do. The second thing that we need to do before starting writing code is to get that client secret, the credential to access Dialogflow API. So if you look at the documentation, they're quite confusing, but in the, in the end they said, uh, you install this, you install the Google Cloud package manager in your uh, command line, and then mm, you set up a couple, uh, an environmental variable on your computer and also in the server that is running the process.php and then download the file somewhere on your disk, the client secrets somewhere on your disk and put it in this environmental variable and magically it should work, it should be recognizable by any project that uses the uh, Google API. So the Google SDK. So since this is quite a, a long process that required to install some packages, change environmental variable, and so on. There is a shorter version that is just take that file, download it in your local folder, and uh, pass it as a credential object in the client session. So we are going to just, just create this file and download it. That is, in any case, mandatory, but, just, but we skip the entire install, the Google Cloud package manager, run it, init it, and set environmental variables, and so on. So that file, to, to create that file, you have to go in the settings, in general, and then after this lecture, I will going to, to delete this agent because these are uh, private information. So they are not safe on YouTube. And you can click on the project ID that you have to remember because it's important. We are going to use it in the code, the project ID. If you click on the project ID, you go on the Google Cloud uh, platform, console, whatever, in which you have some information about your Dialogflow instance that you created. So for instance, the number of requests, you see that we have some requests here in this uh, request for second because we, tr we tested it in the browser. So there is some yellow um, point here and we need to uh, go here there are several points to reach that page we can go here in explore and enable API 
then go to credentials because we are going to to need a credential and here you see that we have just one service account key that was created on the 27th of november when we created the agent in dialogflow that is a, that for dialogflow integration for other services telegram uh, whatever so you create the, the instance you create the agent and this is automatically created for you and we need to add another service account so we can go here and create a credential and generate a service account key in the key type we have to select the json and here we have to select a new service account we don't want to create another integration for dialogflow telegram whatsoever but we need something different so it's a new service account that requires basically two information a name uh, we can call it the weather app that is also the service account id part of it and the role the role is the one that we have seen before you can select quite a lot of roles there is also a general role for every google or most of google projects and so on we are just interested in dialogflow and we can select the api admin the api client the reader and the console agent editor those four roles that we have seen in that table before and we can select the dialogflow api client and we can press create it downloads something and say that this file that we can rename it's not important the name the weather agent whatever that json allow access to your cloud resources in this case only dialogflow so store it secretly and this is the file that should not leave your computer because it contains a private key so if you press close you see here that you have a new line this table that was created today and with the name that you you added and you can also delete here and in manage you can also create another key for the same service you can delete it you can edit the information change the name and perform all this operation so we have the key we can just close this not need it anymore and we can right now put the key just in the um, application folder where we have the index html we have composer right now we have all of this and we can also use a, a more simple name since we have to to use it in the code like for instance client secret just just a name no matter so right now we have all the ingredients to perform our connection with dialogflow and send and receive information from that so we don't need to ed edit the the uh, javascript file the html file because they just perform this take the test the text that is inserted by the user and pass it to this file what we need to do is as i told you before we need to create a new session then we need to create a new uh, query input starting from the text that is stored in user query and then send and get send the request and get the response from the flow hmm? and give back the response to the close this uh, post request respond to this post request hmm? so before this we need to uh, link this file with the content of that vendor folder so we can we have to do require uh, dear dot uh, um, 
vendor slash autoload.php. This autoload.php is a facility of Composer that automatically tries to match your request with the right library, the right, the right content in that vendor folder. So you require this and you should be able to use everything that is installed through um, Composer. And if you look in the documentation of Dialogflow, you see that this line is always present in the Dialogflow SDK in PHP because this is the normal way of working with um, Composer and, and this. Then here we can, first of all, uh, create the credential object to pass to the client secret. So the, the session client. So the session client could be a variable called session client, for instance, that say new session client, uh, sessions client. So you see that, well, PHP Storm autocomplete, this is not really uh, readable because it has, say, the package name, let's call it the package name, before the actual class. We can maybe since we are going to use this Google Cloud Dialogflow version two quite a lot of time, we can just delete here and say import class and have this. So use Google Cloud Dialogflow v2 session client. So that every time we use session client, we just refer to that space, to that domain, to that, let's call it package. Here in session client, by the documentation, if you don't pass everything, it looks for an environmental variable, possibly accessible from PHP, from the, the Apache server, that contains the path to the client, the client secret.json file that we, we download it. We don't want to follow that path, so we pass here just an object called the credential that is allowed and we can obviously create here. This credential should be an array. Uh, that contains a credential. Credentials. And the name of the JSON file that we called uh, uh, client secret.json the path of this. But since it's local to this folder, it's just the name. We pass it to the session client and we also see that there is an unendable exception. We can say try and then finally, whatever it is, for instance, and also catch the exception and handle it if you want. So we have this section client created. Now we have to say two things to this session. The first thing is uh, what is the project ID that we want to connect? Because you can have multiple Dialogflow project enabled by the same key, but you can choose this is connected to the agent number one and other project uses the same key but is connected to another agent. So it, he needs the ID of the project and he needs the session ID. Again, the session is that conversation. The, a number that should change only when you shift a conversation. So here in this sample, we just have one endless conversation. So we can just put like one as session ID or just a number. So, in, uh, um, we have to create another object that is called session that uh, is session client, the variable we created before, uh, and we set up the session name, mm, session name uh, that is the dialog for project, this one, 
weather agent, the name of the project, you get it, weather agent minus something, or in your case. You see that it, it suggests project, and then it asks you for a session as a string that we can say, for instance, is one, two, three, four, five, six. If we, for instance, get this from uh, another function before, we can we have to to change it. We maybe can use a variable here instead of session. And if this, this variable is is empty, we can generate a new random unique ID, for instance. So we can have here a variable and then something like uni unique ID. So if this variable that obviously here is always true because it's just a number, this could be a string, uh, is, is false, this first variable is false, obviously the here is never, you can, we can generate a unique ID every time we create, we call this line. So if you want to then change these, you have the, the rest of the, of the function uh, worked. And here we have um, the session mm -hmm. uh, in the end in any case we have to close that section we are opening a session and we have to remember to close it so just to be sure not to forget it so in any case we, we will close the session and now we have to perform to get the text we are receiving for in the user query variable and prepare it to send to to dialog flow and we have to create uh, two things a query input object that is just a new query input And we also need, uh, let me add it here, uh, a text input. Mm -hmm. Because this query input is just a container for sending some queries to Dialogflow. And these queries could be of two types, text or audio, mm -hmm. either complete file or stream. So this is just a container that contains the appropriate input. In our case, we will always have text because the, per, the transformation from speech to text is performed by, by the web speech API. So here we have this new query input, then we, we have to create a text input. Uh -huh. New text input. And this text input, we have to set two things, like we did with the Web Speech API. The actual test and the language of this text. Because the Alloclock can support multiple texts in the same agent. So we can have some sentence in Italian, some sentence in English, some sentence in Portuguese, or whatever language you want that is supported. So in this variable, text input, we have a set text in which we are going to say the text is in the user query. And this text set language code is an US. It is the language of the text. And finally, we can say that the query input set text the text input. Hmm? So we create a session, we create a query input, we created the text to be added in that query input and we added the text in the uh, bigger, in the container of this object. So now we are ready to send the request and get just the response as in those JSON on the uh, web page. 
So we can have an object that is called a variable, that's called the response, for instance, that, as, as I showed you before on the documentation, uses the session client object to detect intent. This performs the post request to Dialogflow. And this wants at least two parameters. The first one is the session, that object we created uh, over there with the session name and the session ID, and uh, the query input to be passed to Dialogflow. So here we have session and query input. So it performed the post request. If successful, it get a response. It get the JSON and put the JSON in an object that is contained in that response. And so from that response, we can extract that text that we were interested. This fulfillment text here, because it contains the actual response that we are interested in. So um, let's call it query result. Because from response, response contains all those fields in, in the JSON file. From here, we have to get the actual result and uh, we can get the fulfillment text uh, from this query result. That has getter for basically all those fields and and, and also other because that was a process that completed that one this here is a process that complete here in the case if you remember the case of the weather what's the weather i don't see the i don't tell the system the city the response is where where, where. so where is in the fulfillment text but we have other parameter that indicates that the conversation is not complete so we have much more parameter of this some of these will be empty, other so like parameters probably contains the city name. So you can also use that uh, like, like here. Hmm? Uh, well, not in this case, but if you ask for a city, you remember that you have here in this column also city, um, what is called? Uh, dollar jail um, city equal Turing and date equal whatever if the date was present. So here we have all this information. We are just interested in the fulfillment text and finally we can provide this information to our front end to our to, we can respond to the uh, post request you're receiving, so the query fulfillment text. So, respond to the Ajax request. So, basically, just to briefly recap, we created a session with those credentials we downloaded. We create the container and set the text instead in, inside this container, this query input, send the request, hopefully get the right response, get the fulfillment text, that is the response coming from the server, and with the echo function, echo here in line 35, 34, we get back in the HTML page the the actual content so if i didn't make any error we can try this so this is the weather app as always let's see if we need to amend this tomorrow or not let's start from oh here. no there has been an internal server error okay Let me check if it's something, line one, something quick, line one is just PHP.
it's called the client secret cs okay try again maybe this and then we will catch the error tomorrow since it's almost seven oh no okay there has been an internal server error. so tomorrow we will fix this and uh, we continue from here just to understand where where the error is and and that's it for today tomorrow we will fix this and we will add the webhook um, for connecting to the weather application and have a good night <laughs>